Stanford is in the volleyball final. This is their sixth straight year. In 1984, you and I were talking about this, they lost to UCLA three games to two after being ahead 12 to four in the fifth game. They lost three to one to Pacific in 85 after winning the first game. In 86, they were bumped out by Nebraska three to one after again winning the first game. They're a very enigmatic team. Now Hawaii, of course, as we have mentioned, was upset in five games in 1984 in the first round, a real upset against Oregon. They lost a five-gamer on the mainland. That was after winning national titles in 82 and 83. In 85, the Wahinis were swept by Pacific in the regionals. Pacific, of course, won the title. And last year, Hawaii again lost in the regionals to Pacific 3-1. to one. So these teams have been there before. There are no real surprises. They know each other well. Stanford just has to play their best and do things that Hawaii can't return. That's right, we saw, we saw shots of the two coaches there. Interestingly enough, both graduates of the University of California at Santa Barbara, both gauchos, both very good friends. Three out of four coaches in this final four. Mike Ebert, also from UC Santa Barbara. That's right, the University of Illinois coach. There's a shot of Don Shaw and his assistant, Ruben, Ruben Nieves, Nieves, and uh, they have done one terrific job with the Stanford team. I'm really impressed with their cohesion and the tactics they use. Excellent team. Five to one, Stanford trying to get it back. Off the block, Jesse, Cincerova, Ahuna. Ahuna taps it down in the middle. Six to one. Big play by Ahuna that time, big play. There's a yellow card coming out right now. Watch this, watch Bobby Clark here. He gives a yellow card to Amy Hayes that time. She kicked the ball across the net and a hit T to Ahuna. That's the wrong person, by the way, to kick the ball at. <laughs> It kind of looks over. Let's see what Ahuna does the next time she gets a chance to put one away. Ball is hit long, so it didn't work for Stanford either way. Stanford just self-destructing right now. Teresa Smith not ready for that set. I think Wendy Rush faked her out. Wendy's such a good setter, by the way, that sometimes she fakes out even her own hitters. It is seven to one. Reno up front, Rush. Olison, she hits it long. It's eight to one. And Chris, it hasn't been so much Hawaii this game. It's been Stanford going the other way. That's right. They're self-destructing right now. They need to side out badly here. And Smith and Olison and Asper can't seem to get it for them. Hawaii crowd starting to go bananas. There it is off the blocker. It's 9-1. to one. The Hawaii crowd. There Coach Shoji. And there's the Hawaii crowd. The lava lavas, the pom-pom, the towels. And a timeout is called by Coach Don Shaw. His final timeout. Good Hawaii contingent here in this crowd of 68-85. Of course, the governor's up there. We will have the governor after the game. Governor Waihei again arriving here about 4 o'clock. Came right over to us before the start of the game. Got that salt sprinkled around. It's doing its stuff. Hawaii 9-1 to one and looking real good here in game number 4, Chris. It sure is, but never say, never say over against the Stanford team. They'll come back. They are, as I said, well coached. They're well trained. And they won't give up. Their seniors, especially having been here four times, uh, are not going to give up until that final point's over. And there's Dave Shoji saying, listen, don't stop now until you get to 15, guys. If Hawaii had a letdown, it was last game. This game, they haven't had to do too much. Stanford has made a bunch of unforced errors. And you would think with the momentum being on their side, they would have come out steaming. They would have come out steaming in that last game. There we see Don Shaw using up his last timeout. He has no way to slow down the momentum after this except with a substitute. He's out of timeouts. That could be a key factor in this game number four. Suzanne Eggie serving. Hawaii trying to get into double figures, but they won't. Stanford gets the timeout. That time Stanford, one of the best side out teams in the country. They, they really normally off the serve get a side out very, very well. They had trouble in that series, but after a timeout, Shaw called the right play, and they got a good, good side out. Smith with the aggressive jump serve, but T. Williams with the aggressive T. Bomb. And what's great is we'll have another entire season to come up with more silly, cliched nicknames for T. Williams shots. Send them in to Channel 13. Up front now, Hayes. Ball does not go over. Four hits called on Stanford. John, that was a great example of the blockers talking the referee into that call. Both blockers came down and yelled no. Bobby Clark was not sure if the ball touched one of the blockers or not. The blockers talked him into the call and convinced. He's a great referee, but that's one of the things players can do to have an effect on the game. Little that eye got, contact there with Klubnikin and, and Clark, and they made that call that the ball did not go over the net. So Hawaii gets the point. It's 10-1. And coming into the game for Hayes is Jenny Chafee, and she makes her mark as she gets the side out back. 
Wendy Rush exhorting her teammates, setting Jenny Chafee for the first time in two nights. They're trying anything right now to make things happen. Laura Olison, good serve in the middle. Eggie up front. You hear the crowd. That is go, Bose. You're hearing yelled there. And Hawaii gets it back. T. John, that was the T factor I was talking about right there. They move T to the outside. She normally hits middle. They move her to the outside. It stops any sort of rally. The other team gets going. Excellent shot by T. Williams. Elenecki with a deep floater. Reno up front. Elenecki, good dig. Jesse. T. Williams over the blockers, but right there is Rush. Chafee off the block, and it's side out again for Stanford. Chafee doing a good job since she came in. That's right, Ellen Necky with the dig of the night, though. That was a rocket that Nancy Riedel hit down the line, and Ellen Necky popped it up with ease. Ball served over by Stanford. He needs some quick action. 1-10, T. Williams off the block. Set up front by Reno. The remainder of this play was lost due to tape damage. Coming up next, the exciting conclusion of this historical match. We resume play still in game four. The score standing at Hawaii 10, Stanford 1. The ball all over the court. And I'm convinced as the game goes on, Diana Jesse tends to get stronger. Ball that time hit out by Hawaii. It's 10-1. There's, there's, there's a couple things about Diana Jesse. One, she gets better in front of big crowds. She gets better when she has a fever. And she gets better when, she, when uh, as long as the match gets. Well, all she had was a strain back tonight. It obviously hasn't affected her, but she has been so super these last couple of years as we've been covering her. And she does seem to always get stronger as the match wears on. Stanford serving, and Jesse must have hurt us. She gets it back over for Hawaii. Two Stanford blockers up with Eggie that time. Give the credit to the passer, Ahuna, who had a perfect pass that time. It's two Stanford blockers up with the middle hitter, Eggie, and Jesse has a one on one. She'll win that most of the time. Since Arova, good line drive serve. Rush sets it up. A little bit too much for Reno, and a net violation. No chance for Reno that time, Chris, as she slid under the net after making that save of the ball. Not a great set. It's 11 to 1. I won't say it's anticlimactic, but Stanford has taken themselves out of this fourth game. Tough set that time, and they're just going to pop it over. Good chance for Cincerova. She wheels her magic and puts it to Jesse. Smart set by Cincerova that time again, testing the right side, testing that Stanford block over there. Getting the, another point, leading 12-1. You are watching a well-oiled machine, putting it into fourth gear. Reno sets it up, or is set up, rather. She hits the block. T is there to set it. Cincerova sets it. Ahuna adds her bang. It falls down. It's 13-1. You are watching the end of a dynasty here as Hawaii waiting and waiting and waiting since 1983 for a national crown. They are two points away. 13 to one. Cincerova serving. Reno, Cincerova. Jesse tips it over and can't save it. Then had to wait to see if that one was gonna pop over. It did, it's side out to Nancy Reno. John, I can somehow feel the clum crowd that was there that night against University of Pacific. I can feel them here right now. They're the ones that really helped get Hawaii to this Indianapolis Market Square Arena. The girls I know know it, and the 50 fans that are up there in the stands, they can feel it right now, leading 13-1. It'll be very hard for Hawaii to lose this game. We've had great fans all year long and all season long at the games and on Channel 13. Stand up and give yourselves a hand because it's about to happen. Wendy Rush sets it up. Stopped up front by Ellen Ecke and Eggy. Again, the ball set up front. Smith dinks it, and it lands out. Another unforced error. It's 14 to 1. And as we say back home, it's Aloha Ball. That's right. And there's Suzanne Eggy breaking out the smile. Tita Ahuna breaking out the shaka sign. She's giving it to the Hawaii crowd up the in Hawaii the stands. The Hawaii crowd is going bananas in the stands. It's 14 to 1. One more point. Four years of waiting are coming to an end now in for the Rainbow Wahines. In basketball right now, I'd sub out some of these starters for give them a standing ovation, but it's tough to do here. It's over. Time. Suzanne Aggie ends it. The PCAA Player of the Year, Hawaii, has won a national title. The 1987 NCAA Women's Volleyball Champs, 15 to 1, an anticlimactic final game as they whip the Stanford Cardinal. 1987 Division One Women's you're going to see tears flowing out there. A lot of years they've been waiting for this. The crowd standing up and giving Hawaii a cheer now. I wish I could turn it over to the crowd, but it's a very polite crowd. The best crowd is probably sitting with you in your living room. 
There you see the traditional post-game congratulations, both teams. A lot of these girls played together at the university games last summer. Five All-Americans, seven seniors. There's a lot of emotion there. And there you see the Hawaii girls together. And the big hug. There's T. Williams. The T factor was in effect tonight. There's no doubt about that. A, very much an, a, a team victory, a T victory, whatever you want to call it. It's a Hawaii victory. And the fans back home and the fans.